Imagine a missile that travels at least five times the speed of sound or one mile in a second. Hypersonic missiles are just that. There are two types of hypersonic missiles, hypersonic cruise missiles and hypersonic glide vehicles. The test India conducted involved the glide vehicle variant with a range of 1,500 kilometers. Unlike hypersonic cruise missiles, it does not rely directly on a scramjet engine. The glide vehicle is carried into the upper atmosphere by a rocket booster, likely derived from India's existing ballistic missile technology such as the Agni series. The booster provides the initial thrust needed to accelerate the HGV to hypersonic speeds. After the booster phase, the vehicle enters the glide phase toward its target. During this phase the HGV does not use any propulsion system instead, it relies purely on aerodynamics to glide through the upper atmosphere at hypersonic speeds. Looking at the design, the missile incorporates four triangular control surfaces near the rear, which serve to maintain stability, optimize lift-to-drag ratios, provide aerodynamic control during flight, and enable precise terminal maneuvers for enhanced targeting accuracy. Additionally, it features four clipped tip delta wings that generate lift during the glide phase and minimize drag to sustain speeds above Mach 5. Other types of glide vehicle designs include the blended wing body which seamlessly integrates the wings and fuselage into a smooth shape to enhance lift and aerodynamic efficiency. However, this design may struggle with precise directional changes making India's delta wing and moving fins design superior for terminal maneuvers. Another example is the conical body, characterized by its sharp, tapering shape that minimizes drag for high-speed performance. While conical designs lack significant lift and rely on a ballistic trajectory, delta wings provide sustained lift during the glide phase, extending range and enhancing flexibility. What challenges did the DRDO face to make the test successful? The glide vehicle uses advanced thermal protection systems and heat-resistant materials, such as composites or alloys, to prevent structural damage. However, there is no information available about whether DRDO has overcome the plasma problem. At hypersonic speeds, the missile surface can reach temperatures of several thousand degrees Celsius, ionizing the surrounding air and creating a plasma layer, a cloud of electrically charged particles enveloping the missile. This plasma sheath interferes with electromagnetic waves including radio signals, causing difficulties with real-time communication and GPS-based navigation. This phenomenon is similar to the communication blackout experienced by spacecraft during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. So, how does navigation work despite these challenges? The Indian HGV likely uses inertial navigation systems for mid-flight corrections. INS does not rely on external signals, making it resilient to communication blackouts or jamming. A terminal sensors for precise targeting during the final phase of flight. India's Defense Research and Development Organization mentioned that the test demonstrated successful terminal maneuvers and high-precision impact verification tracked by downrange ship stations and other systems. This level of precision strongly suggests the use of satellite-aided navigation, likely via IRNSS, for mid-course corrections and terminal accuracy. While plasma during hypersonic flight can block signals temporarily, Satellite corrections can be applied during communication windows when the plasma sheath dissipates, particularly in the terminal phase as velocity decreases. The HGV will likely be developed further for other branches of the military, including the Navy and Air Force. India has already tested scramjet technology in the hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle in 2020. A scramjet engine could be integrated into future hypersonic cruise missiles, providing continuous propulsion and eliminating the need for a rocket booster. Now, let's address the criticism of hypersonic missiles. 
Hypersonic weapons are marketed primarily for their speed, yet ballistic missiles already achieve hypersonic speeds during their flight and are much cheaper to produce. MARVs, which avoid prolonged heating by flying above the atmosphere, offer comparable speed, accuracy and range at a lower cost. While hypersonic missiles can glide at low altitudes, reducing radar detection ranges, this flight profile generates significant drag that slows the missile, potentially making it slower than ballistic missiles on depressed trajectories. Unlike ballistic missile warheads which experience intense heating only during re-entry, hypersonic vehicles must endure sustained heat for much longer durations. This limits their performance and range. Additionally, glide vehicles require large boosters, making their launches easily detectable by existing satellite early warning systems. The intense heat generated during the glide phase produces a bright infrared signal, which is visible to modern satellites, undermining claims of stealth. As technology evolves, hypersonic systems could indeed become viable and even game-changing. However, their development must address the balance between cost, capability, and practicality to justify widespread adoption.